So welcome back to the continuing episode of the Porsche 911 where we're working on the rear suspension and so we can then take it to get the four wheel alignment done and in doing so we need all the nuts for the uh, toe which you could also call tracking and the camber to be adjustable. So the front's okay because basically we've replaced the ball joints on there. I'm going to expose the top of the turret so, so obviously the guy can just, or girl it could be, just get to the bolts and adjust the suspension. And at the rear we're adjusting those camber bolts. One side was fine, unfortunately the other side was completely seized. So we're having to invest and of course we have to pay the Porsche tax on this. So we've got the rear uh, track control arm, the lower suspension arm, also called the coffin and then uh, well let's call it another track control arm here so the three items we're going to replace and also these are the eccentric bolts that they're going to be replaced Porsche kindly give you 50 pound off so they don't really that's just a 10 percent off design 911 so spank the heck out of that if you like uh show five two three so working on the lower control arm now just carefully trying to cut between basically you've got the aluminium control arm here got the aluminium subframe and a steel bolt so you want to work towards sacrificing this because this is going to be scrap anyway and do not cut into the subframe so we're going to cut on the nut side first on the bolt side first and then on that side second There we go, bolt head off that side. We just gotta get down this side now. This one looks a bit trickier and a bit tighter. stripped off the rear suspension on the corner and basically this was all to do with the um, eccentric bolts that will adjust your toe and camber I could not adjust them because they were C solid so let me just show you what we've had, ended up having to cut off and then we'll get into the cost so basically I've had to cut the rear uh, toe bar off uh, not the toe bar, the rear track control bar off which is this one, I basically cut it just to give more clearance with the saw but you can see this pin here which is basically basically this is one end of it there and uh, where's the other end of it here so this is the uh, eccentric, eccentric bolt so basically that was completely seized in there so I couldn't adjust the toe on that one so that's scrap this one which is the coffin arm you can see why it's called the coffin arm because of the shape of it this and the uh, rear control arm here, annoyingly both of them, there is not much play in these or the bushes, um, so it would have been good to go other than the fact, again, this bolt was seized in here, so basically I couldn't adjust the camber on this one. I suppose actually thinking about it now, I could have left this in because the camber wasn't too bad. But definitely the toe is way out, uh, the tracking is way out. But anyway, um, I've, I've taken this off and then this one just basically had some play in the end, which I'll see if I can show. This one, which it's just got some play in, if you can hear it. So that there. 
is the play and that would obviously end up affecting the toe because it would allow the wheel to twitch in and out so we need to replace all those so there we go there's the rear suspension all back together now um, yeah, didn't have a problem with the caster bolts on this side on the uh, let's call it the passenger side uh, that was fine and then on the driver's side we basically had to put a new coffin arm on a new uh, front track control arm and a rear toe arm there now new camber bolts are in there as well so what we're going to do is get this on the four wheel alignment uh, and then get that checked out and see how far out it was before obviously we'll hope it is out uh, or else all the work we've done is a waste of time uh, and also one other annoying revolution that's just appeared, occurred let me show you this front strut, look at this what do you spot there that's wrong? yeah look at that snap stud so someone's gone to adjust the suspension and snapped it so I've now got to take that out I'm going to try and drill it out first of all I'm going to try and press it out because it's actually it's more like a wheel stud so it's got splines in the cup so I should be able to push it out should I say I may have to remove the strut but I hope not because I've now got a matter of days before the mom so wheel off let's see what we can do about that strut let's see if I can knock it out in position if I'm not I'm going to have to take the top strut out I might leave the, might leave the strut in just time to take the top mount out leave the spring in use the car weight to compress the spring slowly let it off take the top mount out and get it in the vise and, and put a new stud in it so that's going to be interesting and then I've got to put the belly plates back on and then I think we're done so let's get cracking on this oh one other thing I should say big shout out to my friend Paul who machine polished it all and then sprayed some magic gizmo I think it was auto glim pole or something or other anyway sprayed all that all over it and doesn't it look super shiny and there's just one little dint that you might see here if I can get the light right about there that I'm gonna see if I can get my dint man to sort out probably just caught it then he's gonna have a go at that it's there see if he can get that out he's a bit of a wizard so we'll see what he can do with that right let's get on with this strut so as I say these are uh, pushed in they're actually splines pushed in you can see from beneath if we look up you can just see there you can just see the stud there how it's pushed in so it's not welding in it's actually on a spline now I'm going to try and knock it out in situ because it is spline but the reality is there'll probably be so much flex and bounce in this that it's not going to get the the sort of force that I need to get out so the other idea is to try and block something up underneath down to the ground to take all the shock out of it so it'll just try and drift it out failing that I'm going to have to take the nut off in there undo those bolts and see if I can get the cap out worst case scenario the whole strut out so I've tried just hitting it with a brass drift on it like this but I can just feel all the spring and everything moving below uh, it's just taking the power out of the blow so what I try and need to do is try and brace it okay so my plan worked it's out it's in my hand this is it I'm gonna zoom in and this is the offending item and you can see where it's splined there where it fits in so basically what I did, just used the brass drift. The problem with the brass drift was, the problem with the brass, brass drift was it was too long and I was nearly hitting the bonnet. So I ended up with basically a very short punch, short punch, and a big lump hammer there on the floor. And as soon as you start hitting it, you can feel it's not got that spring in it anymore. And the reason why is I've blocked it up underneath, so all the energy is going to go in pushing this Where's it gone? In pushing this out, all the energy is just going to go into pushing this out rather than trying to just bounce around. And the reason I did this and this, guys, you're going to love this. I've just got to look at you. You do not get this level of MacGyvery in a Porsche garage. If you've gone to a Porsche garage, the strut tops, they're 140 each plus fat. You'll have done one. The garage will have said, I'll tell you what, while you're there, why don't you do both? Then they would have gone, oh, mate, you're... Um, 
your shock absorbers looking a bit rusty, why don't we fit new ones of those while we're at it? And then we'll do all the alignment again. You'd have been into 1500 quid. This is cost me nothing, because I'm going to drift that out. Okay, you can't buy these studs, and really I should have a spline one to go back in. But I'm going to put an unbolt, because I can get underneath. I can put a bolt on the other side, put a nut on the top, and it's fine. And I'm back to three bolts on my strut. But let me show you this level of MacGyver. I'm very proud of this. Look at this for junkiness. Basically, I've got the axle stand, sorry, basically I've got the jack, I've got a 12 inch extension, a 6 inch extension, a 12 inch, 12 inch extension, and then a socket on the top, right on the base of the, um, the actual cup, and that's taking all the shock down there, all the load, sorry, you know, that's holding it firm, so I could then just press that um, stood out. So I'm going to put a bolt in there. So there we go, repair done. Uh, nothing bolt in there, it's an Allen head bolt with a washer underneath so I could just get the Allen key underneath and tighten it up on the top so I've now got three bolts. Circle these because that's where it's set to the, uh, the four wheel alignment and on the other side as well if I ever need to take the strut out again. When I do take the strut out I will replace the front struts because I've replaced the rear struts. So sometime probably next year when I do it I will put a new stud in here but this is as good as a stud because it's a, it's a nut and bolt all the way through. So that's a good repair. Finally at last the car has rewarded me with an easy repair. Obviously uh, I wasn't looking for that and how did I come to find that? Oh I was just being polite for the four wheel alignment chap that um, took all the covers off and made sure the studs undid, undid and obviously found a snap one. So I'm glad I did because that could have been perilous, cornering at speed with only two bolts 120 degrees apart and not the three bolts like a tripod, you know how, long, how strong a tripod is. Um, so I'm quite pleased I found that. Um, get the wheel back on, get the belly pans on. Oh, there's the other nice thing. While I was at the four-wheel alignment, um, there was two guys working there, two engineers, they came out. Obviously one was doing the alignment. They were both like, wow, this is clean underneath. And then they even got the manager of the of the shop out to have a look underneath and, and they all agreed it was the cleanest 911 996 they'd seen underneath. So that's four people who've seen the underside and liked it. So I'm pleased with that. Anyway, uh, belly pans on, trim on. Might have something else to add in this episode, but let's see how we go. We've been for four wheel alignment and it did prove that the rear wheels had 16 millimeters of toe in. And that's why basically it was just fighting itself down the road. Every time one tyre would lose grip on, compared to the other going across a rough surface, it would switch the back end around and I could just feel it shimming around. So now I've got the tracking set properly, it's spot on. Now on that note, no idea how the Porsche specialist in the receipt in the book managed to adjust the suspension last time because all the rear suspension on one side was completely seized and there's no way they could have adjusted it. So I think that'll do for today. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And there'll be more Porsche content coming soon. Thank you.